The beginning of the movie starts off with a once upon a time, long ago, dot 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 text. And then cuts to a flashback where we meet this farmer who's minding his own business. Good farming. Really? Old dairy farmers like yourself. The villain in the movie surprises him and stops by his home unannounced. Together, both of them have an adult conversation. Their dialogue is way too rated R for the little girl who hides underground, but she eavesdrops anyway. The villain summons his henchmen to shoot all the innocent bystanders. The little girl hears the gunshots and runs for her life. She manages to get away and flash forward, we meet her present day. She seems to be doing okay on the outside, but her insides are more broke than an NBA veteran. After losing her family members years ago, she has a hard time caring for anybody or anything. The only person she cares about is the black guy in the movie. The woman makes a vow to herself that one day, she'll get revenge on the soldier that got her father killed. She's not alone because other people want the evil military leader dead too. There's a small group of rebels and a band of misfits want the villain killed just as bad as she does. One of the members of the rebel forces used to work for the bad guys but stabbed him in the back to their faces. He has a change of heart when he's locked up in prison. It's said that when a man does a crime and has to do the time, that's when a man finds out who his true friends are based on the people that visit him. The rebels are the only ones that visit him in prison and break him out to give him back his freedom. Speaking of innocent prisoners, the film does this interesting thing where it gives the good guys bad guy backgrounds and the bad guys good guy backgrounds. For example, the main villain in the movie thinks he's a hero and goes as far as wearing a cape in his scenes like he's Superman or something. No capes! Make no mistakes, these a-holes are far from heroes and show no mercy. There's this one character who walks with a limp because of an injured leg. Instead of showing mercy to the handicapped person, the bad guy says F that and kills the cripple to death. To be fair, the good guys are just as ruthless though, so the best way to survive in the movie is to move in silence and if you do manage to get caught, forget the silence and answer all their questions. There's a secret weapon in the movie that could blow up anything, any size. A woman has secret intel and thinks she knows a way to defeat all the bad guys. Not only is the plan stupid, it's unbefreaking believable, which is why nobody believes her. Ask everything based on what? The testimony of a criminal. Yeah, we got word for that kind of odd in English. It's called suspicious. Out of opinions and out of runtime, the characters have no choice but to trust the woman. They infiltrate the location with all the enemy soldiers by using a disguise to blend in. The girl makes an inspiring speech to the group and just like that, but da 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 but da 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 but da 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 Everybody shoots everybody. Some of the soldiers try to retreat, but they're trapped inside and can't go anywhere. We're having no effect on that shield. The evil soldier sneaks up on the chick and he dies so the good guys win, but not really because the secret weapon burns everything up and she dies too, so the battle ends in a tie. Afterwards, everybody, and I mean everybody dies in the movie. And I sure hope nobody near the blast was a Christian or Islamic because the dead bodies all get cremated by mistake. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so? If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. <gasps> <laughs> Best elevator music I've ever heard.